Metabolic syndrome. Why is it so dangerous? And what you need to know. Take out meals, sitting at a desk most of the day and an extra 20 pounds that you just can't shake, if that sounds like you, listen up. You're one of the millions of Americans at risk of developing metabolic syndrome, a cluster of health conditions that includes obesity, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes and abnormal cholesterol. All of these conditions are related, if you're overweight, especially around your abdomen, that fat secretes hormones such as stress hormones that raise your blood pressure, blood glucose levels and levels of LDL, bad cholesterol, explains Dennis Brummer, a cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic. The relationship between heart disease and type 2 diabetes has become so interrelated now, that some experts in the field are even suggesting the creation of a new specialty, car diabetes. My patients are surprised to learn that all of these are so interconnected, but they are, Brummer adds. While around 1 in 3 Americans have metabolic syndrome, people over the age of 60 are particularly vulnerable, with about 1 in 2 affected, according to a 2015 study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. It's become more common in people of all ages, including children, but older adults are especially at risk because they're also more prone to weight gain and developing chronic diseases such as hypertension as they age. But this condition, also known as insulin resistance syndrome, or syndrome X, raises the risk of a whole host of conditions, including type 2 diabetes, heart attack and stroke. If you are finding value in this content please like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Here's what you need to know. Why it's so dangerous. To be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, groups like the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology agree that you need to have at least three of the following five risk factors. A waist size greater than 40 inches in men, and 35 inches in women. Abnormal blood sugar levels. You don't have to have full-blown type 2 diabetes, but you may be in the pre-diabetes stage. That's a fasting blood sugar greater than or equal to 100 mg per deciliter, mg dl, or a hemoglobin A1c level that's at least 5.7%. High blood pressure, anything above 130 over 85. Elevated triglycerides, greater than or equal to 150 mg per deciliter. Low HDL, good cholesterol, or less than 40 mg per deciliter for men or 50 mg per deciliter for women. But even having just one or two of these risk factors is cause for concern. About half of all patients that we diagnose with metabolic syndrome already have undiagnosed cardiovascular disease, such as changes in the walls of their blood vessels that haven't yet caused symptoms. That's why staying on top of all of these conditions, and treating them aggressively, is key. Otherwise, people who go on to develop metabolic syndrome are at risk of several life-threatening conditions, including type 2 diabetes. People with metabolic syndrome are more likely to develop insulin resistance, a condition in which the cells of the body do not respond correctly to the hormone insulin. This means glucose cannot enter cells as easily, leading to an increase in blood sugar. This can develop to type 2 diabetes over time. A study published in the Journal of Epidemiology in 2017 indicated that those with two risk factors for metabolic syndrome were more than four times as likely to acquire type 2 diabetes during a five-year period, while those with four risk factors were around 10 times as likely. Heart disease. Plaque buildup in the arteries can be caused by untreated or inadequately managed elevated cholesterol and blood pressure. According to the American College of Cardiology, those with metabolic syndrome are three times more likely to have a stroke or heart attack than those without it. Kidney disease. A Cleveland Clinic research published in the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology found that those with metabolic syndrome have a 55% greater chance of having renal issues. How to minimize risk. According to Brummer, there is no miracle drug to correct metabolic syndrome, but you can minimize your risk of acquiring potentially fatal consequences by controlling many risk factors. Reduce weight. Dr. Peter Golden, medical director of the Division of Endocrinology and Metabolism at Mount Sinai St. Luke's Hospital in New York City, says that losing as little as 5 to 10 percent of your body weight can restore your body's ability to recognize insulin, lower your blood pressure, increase HDL levels, and decrease triglycerides. The Mediterranean diet, which emphasizes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and healthy fats found in foods like fish and olive oil, is one approach to do this. 
a nearly 7,500 person research published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal in 2014 found that patients with metabolic syndrome who follow this eating regimen experience significant reductions in both blood sugar levels and abdominal fat. Schedule your meals. According to a study published in the journal Cell Metabolism, adults with metabolic syndrome who ate only within a self-selected 10-hour daily window for 12 weeks lost a significant amount of weight, particularly around the abdomen, and saw improvements in their blood pressure and cholesterol levels. When you eat within a 10 to 12-hour window, you're following your body's natural circadian cycles, says Pamela Peak, MD, assistant professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and author of The Hunger Fix. It also keeps you from sliding into the nighttime snacking trap, which increases your risk of insulin resistance. Get sufficient rest and maintain a regular sleep routine. Lack of sleep has long been associated with weight gain and an increased risk of heart disease and type 2 diabetes. It increases the levels of hunger hormones such as ghrelin and stress hormones such as cortisol, according to Golden. However, consistent bedtimes and wake-up times are also essential. A research published in the journal Diabetes Care by the American Diabetes Association in June of this year found that every hour of variation in your bedtime boosts your risk of getting metabolic syndrome by 27%. Michael Bruce, a Los Angeles-based sleep specialist and author of The Power of When, argues that repeatedly shifting your sleep and wake hours can interfere with your circadian rhythms, which in turn can influence stress hormone levels and blood sugar levels. Lift weights. Exercise can reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome by promoting weight loss, lowering blood pressure, and increasing HDL cholesterol. Aim for around 30 minutes of moderate to strenuous activity, such as brisk walking or jogging, on most weekdays. But resistance exercise is very important. According to a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, people who routinely lift weights are about a third less likely to eventually develop metabolic syndrome. Weight training helps build muscle mass, and we know that lean people have a decreased risk of metabolic syndrome. Consider your numbers. Only by controlling your weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol can metabolic syndrome be treated. While decreasing weight is essential, it is especially crucial to focus on your middle. A 2019 JAMA Network Open research of over 155,000 postmenopausal American women found that those with a normal body mass index, BMI, and a larger waist circumference were nearly one-third more likely to die from cancer or heart disease than those with a normal BMI and a smaller waist. The most likely explanation is that visceral fat causes the body to secrete stress chemicals. These raise blood pressure and blood glucose levels, according to research co-author Wei Bao, MD, an epidemiologist at the University of Iowa College of Public Health in Iowa City. Aim for less than 35 inches for females and less than 40 inches for males. In addition, knowing your cholesterol levels is crucial. Since high levels of LDL cholesterol increase the risk of coronary artery disease, it is recommended that individuals with metabolic syndrome maintain an LDL level between 80 and 100 mg per deciliter. If yours is high, discuss with your doctor the possibility of taking a statin or other cholesterol-lowering medicine. The only approach to increase HDL levels and decrease triglyceride levels is by lifestyle modifications such as weight loss, a healthy diet, and exercise. In addition, your target blood pressure should be below 130 over 80. Broomer advises that if you are unable to control your blood pressure by diet and exercise, you should discuss the possibility of blood pressure lowering medication with your doctor.